to our friend, and I feel like we know her well. I mean, I think this book is equally a book about encountering witches of America, which doesn't actually make a lot of sense because she's only dealing with these extreme figures, not like the standard witches that I meet all the time that are quite delightful and some not, not simple, but sophisticated and are not quite so wacky as the people she interviews. So she, Alex Marr, that is, ends up having an experience where her teacher, Karina, who's been teaching her all of these like basic fairy rituals, actually invites her to go out to a, and I'm not even kidding, a castle. They go to a castle. The coven, what does coven mean? Coven means the whole group of people under one main witch who hang out. Coven means like witch family. So anyway, Mar goes out to this big gathering. They go out at Salwin or Samhain. I, I prefer to say Samhain because that's the way you pronounce the uh, the band from the early 80s that I quite like. So they go out for Samhain to this weird castle. And there, Alex Mar performs rituals and practices within the coven, within the group of people who are also initiated and are students of Karina. Now, what do we do here? I mean, she describes people and she says that they're all white, nerdy, and middle-aged, but seem kind of fun. So they seem sort of delightful. And then <laughs> I remember I had a friend who used to always say, it's like, Unless we get into these occult circles, the whole thing is just going to be ruled, going to be ruled by the fat dorks all around. And I think his actual argument there was that if people who are serious about magic and performing magic, kind of like dumb it down a bit for the other people in the community, one, they lose the real power of doing that magic, um, but also two, they pander to everyday hang around like kind of not real magicians whereas my pal would say not real aspirants they're not aspiring on the other hand i would argue yeah who cares i don't care if people are aspirants i don't care if they're aspiring to meet their holy guardian angel and cross the void the more important thing to me is that they are marking ritual calendars spending time once a week with their community and are building a social understanding of religion. And I'll tell you, the vast majority of people, as if there was a vast majority of people who are aspirants trying to, you know, hit and learn all of the mysteries of the universe through the ritual, they're in a big minority. And in fact, you can locate these people. And if you put them all in the same room, which I did one time, Bad idea. They just get in there and argue horribly with one another. So if you meet someone who's an aspirant, who's pushing themselves, he or herself, through the abyss to learn all the mysteries, don't hook them up with somebody else who's doing the same thing. Because it will be ugly. All right, so the therapist. She describes all these people. And again, she tells a lot about them, but I keep wondering, is it okay for her to say all this? I mean, it's a nice story, but is it okay to describe all these people who are doing supposedly secret rituals? And I'll bring this up again. Alex Mark doesn't tell a lot and she's really vague, but there are people that kind of, I'm not even shitting you, want her dead or telling things that she told about, say, fairy. And I've been very clear about this. I'm a member of the OTO. When she describes the Minerva initiation, I'm like, I have written in the book, oh, no, you don't say that. She's really careful to not tell the super secrets, but she alludes to them enough that it's a little uncomfortable for me. Anyway, so what is a secret? Like, if one person knows a secret that they don't tell anybody, 
then it's not a secret. It's just a thing that one weirdo knows. I would say that secret and maintaining secrecy is important not only to regulate information between people, but by saying this is a secret, you make the information more powerful. And the more secrecy you have around a specific set of, of knowledge, that makes it more powerful. So a secret is not a thing because it can't be told. A secret is a thing because it should be told to very specific people, but not everybody. It's a regulation of knowledge. Now, there's a little bit of weirdness here that I keep thinking about. You know, Alex Murr was really good pals with Morpheus, but she has no formal connection to Morpheus's order. She's not initiated into anything. She only knows Morpheus. She describes all of these other people around, but she doesn't really have an interaction with them. So even her grandiose descriptions of these wacko, delightful human beings are not based on living in community. So one of the things I was thinking about on this is when Catholic monks or future priests go to decide if they're going to be priests or not, they go through a period of discernment. And that's where they go and they live in the community, they live as priests, they live as monks and whatnot, and they see if it's right for them. I see so much of Alex Mar being a period of discernment that at the end of the day, she decided. I have discerned that this is not good for me. This is not right. So I I see Alex Mar very much as a seeker and a person working toward discernment. Now, she does a couple of rituals that we read about. And one of them is a black mirror. She goes into a basement and there's a like a black mirror. And I've talked to you about this, the scrying. And I like to think anybody can do psychic stuff. Just imagine a black mirror in the back of your head and then see what comes up so she sees in the black mirror an image of herself or past self or some sort of ancient connection to greeks and white robes as opposed to red robes or whatever and she's like well maybe they're spanish she's not sure but she realizes she feels a connection to the people she sees in the black mirror but she doesn't have a connection to the people in the coven the actual people around her once again i'll say this is her turning away from community and the point of being vulnerable and in an occult community is community you gotta you gotta get in there it's a fraternal order you're gonna love your brothers and sisters so what i find interesting is she like has this like wild view of her past and her family, but it is different from the experience with a coven all around her. Now, I would argue that she's learning more about her own taste and predilections. There's no accounting for taste. I mean, really, it's like, am I called to be a gardenarian or an Alexandrian Wiccan or an Ochia person? No, you're not called. You have taste. Do you like watermelon? Do you like strawberries? It's about taste. Do they do the stuff that you kind of like, that you have taste for? And if they don't, don't hang out with them. If they do, explore. Anyway, uh, Alex Marr has this quote. Actually, let's, let's take a break for a second. I will come back just a minute with what we are doing. 